Well, welcome to my talk, uh, how to introduce, wow, that's bright, uh, how to introduce three-year-old to the world of computers. First of all, thank you very much for choosing this talk because I know there is a lot of good talks happening at the same time and also the weather is beautiful outside, so thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vladimir Dianovich. Here are my mail, Twitter, blog, if you want to contact me. I am part of professional IT scene since 2006. In other words, I'm getting paid for work I do since 2006, and I worked on all kinds of projects over the time, developed software in all kinds of languages, frameworks, worked in all kinds of companies. I'm a founder and leader of Amsterdam Java User Group. Also, I'm speaker at conferences, but enough about me. So, what this talk is going to be about then? First, I will spend some time about explaining my motivation for doing this. Then, I will spend some time in talking about all the challenges that I was facing and still am. Uh, most of the talk will be, of course, like dedicated to solutions, so to say. So, some were like good, some were not so good. And in the end, there will be some time for questions. So, if you have any questions, please wait until the end and basically ask them then, or you can always like contact me via email. Twitter or just, you know, approach me like face to face, like your choice. So, about motivation. If you're not from an IT and I told you that I want to introduce my, you know, small daughter to the world of computers and programming, you know, logical question that you may ask yourself is, why would I even do something like this, you know? Why do I even think that something like that is a, you know, good idea, you know? And let's be honest, even if you're from the IT, you might have exactly the same question, you know, because let's be honest, IT isn't all glamorous, you know, there's like good days, but there's also the bad days. So not, not all is like fun in the IT world, so to say. So, instead of giving you the answer right away, let's look first at this statement, you know. There's a good chance that you already saw this statement. Software is eating the world. Who saw this uh, statement before? Either nobody or I don't see the hands. Okay, so we might, you know, discuss and argue like how accurate this statement is, you know, but since we're in IT conferences, I would assume that we all agree that this is more or less truth, right? Especially when we take a look into the last few years. But this doesn't mean in my mind that all the future is going to be about software and that all jobs are going to be about writing software. If you go back in time, long, long before this statement came into the place, you know, reading and writing wasn't a common thing, you know. Not everybody knew how to read and write. Same thing for basic math, you know. Knowledge about basic math wasn't really, you know, widely spread. Basically, at that time, if you knew how to read and write, and you knew how to do basic math, there was a good chance that you were either king or a queen or some lordship or some kind, or basically either you were ruling, a lot of people, or basically you're somebody very high in society, because this was like not very common, you know, for all the common people. Nowadays, if you don't know how to read and write, you stand out again. But this time, you basically stand out for all the wrong reasons. Just think about it, you know, like, what job can you actually do today if you don't know how to read, write, or do basic math? You're going to basically be on the lowest part of the society, right? Basically, that's what you can do. If we fast forward a little bit, we come to computers, right? 60 years ago, there were not a, little, a lot of computers, not a lot of people knew how to use them. It was only for special few, right? Only for special, like, scientists, you know, like, dictators, you know, people in the army, you know, things like that. Nowadays, it's a common thing. Everybody has even, like, more, more than one computer, you know? Nowadays, we, th we assume that it's basically common sense, common knowledge, even a grandmas are using computers nowadays and don't think it's a strange thing. If we fast forward some more, then we come to the internet. Again, hello, there's still spaces. Again, the same thing. It started as only something for selected few, again, the scientists and basically people who actually wanted to, you know, change information with one another. Nowadays, it's becoming more and more mainstream. You know, you can argue with me, okay, like, it's not still, still on the level of reading and writing and basic math, because we can still live a very good life without using the internet, you know, but that world is very shrinking, you know, it's shrinking very much and very fast. 
For example, if you live in the Netherlands and you want to pay a bill or you want to pay any utility or you transfer money, you can't go to the bank and actually physically do it. You know, you have to do it online. So the world without the internet is shrinking and shrinking, and basically the internet is becoming like reading and writing and basic math, you know, the common knowledge. This is how I see software. Basically, in my mind, software is going to become more and more mainstream. It's going to be more and more expected from you to actually understand at least the basic behind it and actually maybe do some stuff about it. You know, for example, you know, a very good friend of mine, he's not in computer science, you know, he's like in logistics. But again, he actually writes some scripts in Excel to actually automate some of the things that he's doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You know? So it's coming basically more and more mainstream. And again, like if this is becoming a big part of everybody's life, our role as a parent is actually to give our child you know, the bet, best head start that we can in their life. Because that's our job, let's be honest about it. But let us not forget, software isn't only about writing the code. No, this is something that people very often forget, unfortunately. It is also about solving complex problems. Think about it. In your day job, are you paid to write code? Or are you paid to actually solve some real problem, to actually bring some value to the customers, basically bring a value to your company? I bet it's not for only writing code. Writing code is just a tool to achieve that. Also, it is about creativity. And if you think about it, no matter what job in the future your child does, being able to solve complex problems and being creative is going to only be beneficial to them. There is no way that, that it can hurt them in any way. It can only give them so much head start in the life. And that's why, basically, this is the main motivation why I wanted to bring my child into this world as soon as possible, basically, and to learn her how to use her brain in order to solve complex problems and be creative in this process. So, what was the challenges that I was facing? Well, although some people from time to time would call me like a big child, and sometimes I gave, I gave them the reasons why they, you know, why they could call me like that, let's be honest, I'm not a child anymore, right? And I haven't been a child for a very long period of time of my life. And that means that basically if I want to actually go back to their level and way of thinking and reasoning, it's not a very easy thing to do. You know, for example, you know, I can see something and think it's very beautiful and perfect and my daughter is going to love it. I bring it to her and she says, I don't want to see it. It's not pink. You know? So it isn't always an easy task to actually go to their level of reasoning. Another thing is that my education is mathematics and computer science. And if we think about it, you know, being in an IT, that's a perfect combination, right? But, you know, you can't approach kids and teaching about computers and programming like in that, you know, that way. You, know, you can't say, okay, you see, this is the CPU, this is the memory, basically there's some information between them, there's going to say, what? No, you can't go with them, you know, that way. Additional challenge which I had was basically that my daughter at this time didn't know how to read and write. And, of course, if she can't read and write, then, you know, I can't teach her Java, right? or any other, you know, high-level programming languages out of the option. You know, I have to go for something more basic. Yeah, yeah, but not really basic, yeah. That's a good one. Uh, also, uh, additional thing is that her native language wasn't in English. Uh, her native language is exactly the same like mine, Serbian. And let's be honest, you know, if your main language is in English, then the amount of uh, data and resources at your hand is going to be much more limited, you know, because in IT, everything is English first, and all other languages second. And when we come to Serbian language, like the amount of stuff available in IT for Serbian language is extremely small. And not only that it's small, but it's only aimed at professionals, you know? And, you know, my daughter is not at that level, right? So, and I didn't really want to be Google Translate, you know, all the time, you know? I wanted to actually make sure that she's as, you know, self-sufficient as much as possible, and that I only supervise her, not like, Take her hand, like translating every single thing, you know. And of course, waiting for her to re to learn English, you know, and to read and write is also going to take some time. Another big challenge that I had is basically the fact that the patient isn't her best virtue. You know, I really love my daughter. You know, she has a lot of good science sides, but you know, the patience isn't one of them. You know, she is not type of the kid that you could just take, you know, put at the table, you know, take a paper, say, okay, here's the paper. 
here are crayons, and you know, you walk away, and you come back later, a few hours later, and she's still there drawing. No, she's more the type of a girl that basically, you give her a paper, and by the time you're actually taking crayons out of the box, she's already running around the table, you know, and like, wee! She's a very active one, you know, so like she's always jumping and running and do all kind of crazy stuff, which is perfect for her age, it's very good for, uh, for health, but again, for IT, for solve programming, not the best thing, right? Because you need to sit, think about the program, pro basically the problem for a long period of time, and basically then come try this, try that, try that, and until you find the solution. There is also one more problem, and you know, this is the fully functional laptop, which I gave to her because she wanted to be like mommy and daddy and has her laptop of her own and actually do some stuff on it. And if you're having a problem to see what the problem is, let me zoom it in. And this is actually after I fixed it because all the keys were actually like this. So I managed to find the most of the keys and put them back, you know, but some of them were just lost. The funny thing is, it's still working, and she's now actually using it whenever she's practicing reading and writing. And from time to time, she complains, say, like, I'm missing the keys. And say, hey, think who, who's responsible for that, you know? <laughs> okay, so now when we know about the challenges and motivation, let's look at solution. So first of all, I try to be as prepared as possible. You know, I really believe that good preparation is half of the battle. So even before basically my daughter was born, I was already thinking, okay, how can I actually bring her into this world? How can I actually, I can do stuff so that actually she goes into this world and I push her, but she is not aware that I'm pushing her into this world, you know? And so for me, it was never the question if, it was only the question how. And of course I looked around, what are things available, and let me tell you, there are a lot of things out there that you can use nowadays, you know? Minecraft, for example, you know, it's perfect, it's a game. The game where you actually build stuff, you actually do some creative stuff, you're solving the problems, also you can program that. There's even a lot of workshops and basically the things on the GitHub where actually say, okay, here's how to set up the whole you know, workshop with a Minecraft. The problem is, you know, it's for the older kids, you know, and I didn't want to wait that long. Another one, also great thing, Lego Mindstorm. You know, like, you have Lego, everybody likes Lego. You have big robots which are moving. Everybody loves that, right? And you even do some software, you know, like it's again, perfect. But again, for older kids. So not for me. Another one which I found is called Green Foot. And basically this one is very good thing because here you're actually building a games. And this is basically designed so that small kids can actually take this tool and build their own games, you know, and let's be honest, how cool is that, you know? One of the reasons why I'm in IT is because of the video games. You know, that's my first step into this world. I wanted to build games. I only built one, but yeah, who cares? Uh, but again, this is for the older kids who actually know how to read and write and do debugging and all those kind of things. So again, not for me. Then we of course come to Scratch. Scratch is one of the youngest, is for the youngest kids that I found, and it's perfect. It's basically you're moving the blocks around, it's all in color, you're actually doing all kind of crazy stuff. It's translated in ton of languages, and it's basically you can even like copy paste from other people, you can actually like, do the force, you can do really crazy stuff with Scratch. And again, there's a lot of workshops around the Scratch, and actually how for kids, you know, to actually do programming in Scratch. The problem which I at least had, had with Scratch is the first, well, she needed the laptop, and I wasn't giving my own after what she did to the la previous one. You know, so that's a, that's a little problem. Other problem was basically that she needs to be good enough with the keyboard, with the mouse, with the internet, you know, and some other stuff. And you might say, well, yes, yeah, so what's the problem with that? Well, uh, at this time, my daughter was 11 months old, you know, and I didn't want to wait, you know, a few years before we actually start talking with the scratch, you know. So now you know from who my daughter, you know, inherited the great patience. But then I looked and found out actually that a lot of kids that were programming in scratch and really loved programming, they didn't start with a scratch. They started with something else before scratch. There was a step before. So I looked into that one. And that one was basically board games, card games, any kind different type of family games, you know. So that was basically their initiation into the world of programming and solving problems, things like that, and puzzles, and then they moved to the scratch. So I say, perfect. I just need to find a game that my 
11th month old daughter will love and enjoy, and I can also enjoy so we can actually play together. We're actually going to build stuff, we're going to be creative, we're going to solve some problems, things like that, you know, and like, then I started thinking, okay, what I liked at that age, what I liked when I was a kid. And then it clicked. The thing that I really loved when I was a kid, which I really, really enjoyed building stuff, and also which I enjoyed today, is Lego, of course, you know. Great way of spending time, yeah, you, like, you and a lot of blocks, you know, you just build stuff you know, out of your mind, you know, like out of your creation. Basically, your imagination is only limitation factor that you have. You know, you can do whatever you want to do. So I did what every normal person would do at that point, you know. I just went straight to the co uh, shop to actually buy a Lego for my 11 years old daughter, you know. And when I went into the shop, I was really, really amazed. You know, like it was a huge part of a shop dedicated only to Lego, you know, you had walls of Legos, this, that, like, I don't think, you know, I don't remember that Lego had all those parts before, you know, there's like ninjas, you know, dragons, I don't know, like, Batman, Star Wars, like, whatever, you know, like, in my time, you know, there was, you know, that much stuff of Lego, you know, Lego really evolved around while I was a kid, you know, and I was like, happy, perfect, I'll buy Lego, and then I saw something which broke my heart, I was devastated, you know, I was so devastated that I wanted to cry, you know, really, like, I was, like, completely shattered, you know? And look at the age. From four up. From four up, my daughter is 11 months old, you know, but I will have to wait for three more years before actually I can bring her to the world of Legos? Come on, you know, like, who's going to wait, you know, three years? Like, it, it's like ages, you know? I wanted something now, you know, like, why? Why would I need to wait? So I was there in a the shop, devastated, about to cry, and then I saw something. I saw a light at the end of the tunnel, and it wasn't a train. <laughs> Lego Duplo. If you're like me, and you had no clue what the Lego Duplo is, like I didn't, like it didn't exist in my time, it is basically Lego for small kids. How perfect is that, right? You know, like it's like awesome. You know, woo. Somebody thought about it, like, problem solved, let's buy Lego Duplo, right? Well, not so fast. Again, look at the age. One and a half years old. So if you paid attention, my daughter at this point of time is 11 months old, you know, like, that's more than one in year and a half, right? Okay, so my daughter is 11 months old and Lego Duplo is from one and a half years old, so logical thing would be I just wait for seven months, right? come back to the shop in seven months, and actually then I buy a Lego Dupo and introduce her to the world of Legos, right? That's what a normal person would do, right? Well, precisely, I didn't. I bought it right away. And in my defense, everybody always told me that my daughter is very smart for her age, she's very advanced for her age, so I said, okay, like, her 11 months is somebody else, like, one and a half, so why not? Of course, it had to be a pink because she's a girl, so it has to be a pink. And another thing, because, you know, I know that she likes animals a lot, but I made sure that there's a lot of animals. And she really, really loved it, you know, like, and she loves it still today, you know. She was building the houses for the, for the animals, you know, like towers and this and that, you know, like, and she really enjoyed them. And of course, like, over time, it started to grow more and more. And one game that she actually liked a lot is actually like building a big tower and then we put a chicken on top, and then we, you know, save the chicken, you know. It might sound so funny, but it's actually the part of a Paw Patrol cartoon, where actually there's some chicken which always makes the crazy stuff, and then the dogs come to save her, and she really, really like doing that. Uh, you may also notice one thing, and that's that on purpose they bought this big block, basically box, where actually you have just the block, so there isn't nothing predefined. It's only about you and your imagination, you know, and that's the theme that I const constantly continue doing. Whenever I bought her Lego, I never bought a set with, okay, this is the house, this is the car, no. I was only buying the blocks, basic blocks, and then we create stuff, we solve stuff. We are basically creative and building and basically imagining our own world, you know? And she really loved it, I loved it, so we both enjoyed it. But then, the logical question is, of course, what next? Level one achieved, right? She loves Lego, she loves building stuff, you know, and being creative in the process, you know? But the logical question is, what should I do now? How do I go from level one to level two? 
how should I actually push her into the right direction, but without her being aware that I'm actually pushing her? Because if she's aware that I'm pushing, there's a good chance that she will push back, you know? So, I did what every normal person would do in that position, especially if you're from IT. So, any guess? What do we do when, we're in, when we have a problem and we don't know how to solve it? Precisely. We search for it, you know? We go on the Google and say, okay, or DuckDuckGo or any other search engine that you like, and basically we search for solution. And I was searching and searching and looking for the next step and looking for the next step. And basically then I came across something, you know. I came across something on some website which gets few visitors from time to time. It's not really a huge website, you know, but it has visitors, you know. Maybe you heard of it, you know. Oops. Yeah, Kickstarter. Everybody know what a Kickstarter is? Okay, so not a lot of people. So basically, either you're very shy or you don't want to cooperate, or you don't know. Uh, basically, the Kickstarter is where you go and you put the idea and say, okay, I want to build this, and if enough people actually give you money and say, we will back you up, then you actually build it and you get the money. So there was one project on a Kickstarter, and this project was kind of different from all other projects on a Kickstarter. And the reason why it was different is because usually on a Kickstarter are things which don't exist, or like halfway done, or 70% done. This one was already 100% done. Not only this was 100% done, they had a product which was fully done, like I said. Also, it was sold to a lot of, lot of customers all around the world. They even got ridiculous amount of prizes for this product, you know, so then you might ask, okay, like, then what the hell were they doing on a Kickstarter, right? Well, marketing like everybody else, you know, like they were just selling their existing product with some additional stuff. Product in question was Cubeto. As you can see, it's a wooden block. How exciting is that? But it's not any wooden block. It's basically a robot, which actually you can control via control board, and which you put tokens of different color and size, and basically using those tokens, then the robot does different stuff. There's also a world in which actually robots moves and perform certain tasks. So in my mind, this was perfect. This was exactly what I needed. You know, this is a way for me to push her in the way of computers and programming, and she didn't know how to read or write because it's just blocks of different colors, you know? And another thing why I knew that this is going to be very good is because she already had a robot of BB-8 from Star Wars, the big one, you know, which was reacting to the sound, and she loved playing with it. So I knew, okay, robot she can control, perfect. So, of course, what they do, I ordered it. And while I was waiting for Kubeto to arrive, because as you know, with Kickstarter, it's not like you order stuff and it's like one week later at your home. No, it's like it's like a few months later at your home. What I was doing it in that period was actually storytelling. How the robot is going to come, and not any robot. It's her robot. And it's going to do whatever she says him to do. And she's not going to just say it to him, no? she's going to use a magic, you know? So I was building as much hype as I could to make sure that she's very excited about it. And there was a very simple reason for that, you know, because I wanted to make sure that when finally Kubeto arrives, she plays with it and not the box that it came to. Yeah. And you know, I think that all the parents here like, know exactly what I'm to talking about. It's basically, you know, you spend a lot of time and effort and you're trying to find the perfect toy, you know, for your child and you spend a lot of money for it and you like, and you wrap it in a nice paper and everything and then you give it to them and it's like, and then they took it and just throw it away and then it goes directly to the box, you know? Because then the box is the best toy, the most important toy, you know, like the, the, the everything, you know, while the very expensive toy is somewhere never to be found again. In retrospective, I probably should make, you know, a company for just selling the boxes, you know, to the kids and I will earn a lot of money, you know, because looks kids like boxes more. So, they arrived. Kubeto arrived, you know. I was happy, my daughter was happy, everybody was happy, you know, like, so, of course, they say, let's unpack it. Inside, of course, there's Kubeto. Okay, this doesn't work. Ha, here's the Kubeto. It is a block of wood. It's built very good, which is good because, you know, if we take into account record of my daughter breaking stuff, it should be better, you know, built in a good way. You know, she has amazing ability. You give her anything and she will disassemble it to, you know, to basic parts in seconds, you know. 
I don't know how she do it, but she's very good with that one. It works on batteries, and basically this is how it looks from below. Basically there's like two wheels which allow Kubeta to go forward, go backward, and actually turn, you know, in, spa in, in, you know, in place, you know, like, like a tank, you know. It's a very simple design, very effective design, you know, like, that's why they built a tank that way, you know. And again, you know, what more do you need? Then there was a world for Kubeta. And I say, okay, you know, this is his world. And only he can go there, nobody else. You know, I said, like, you know, Kubeto can live only in that world. If he goes outside of that world, he will just stop, you know, working. You know, like, he should never go outside, you know. In retrospective, I didn't want for, you know, dust and other stuff to go inside the wheels and actually broke his, you know, engine, you know. So. Also, I said, like, we can't go into his world, you know. So you can only, we can just put him there and then, you know, we can't touch him anymore. Very simple reason why. If I told her, Kubeto needs to go from point A to point B, I didn't want for her to go inside, take you better and, you know, carry it over, you know, so. I need to make a story, you know, why she can't do that. And I must say it worked perfectly, you know, it worked like a charm, you know. She wasn't going never in, in that world, and not only that, you know, she didn't allow anybody else to go into inside Kubeta world because that's forbidden. Magic will stop. Then I gave her this and say, this is a magical board for controlling Kubeto. you know. In theory, basically, this is just a control board which connects to Kubeto with the Wi-Fi, you know, but she didn't know about that one. Of course, I said, you know, but you need also a magical stones so you can actually tell Kubeto what to do, you know, because this is just a board, but we need also additional magical substance. And this is the magical stones or tokens. So, as you can see, they're all different color and different shapes. So in that way, you can basically very easily remember, okay, what does what? And I told her, Every magical stone will actually tell Kubeto with the magic to do something for you. So if you want Kubeto to actually do something, you need to make sure to actually put correct magical stone into the board. So green is for forward, or actually Kubeto will just go you know, one, one step forward in his world. Red is, of course, turn right, and sometimes she forgets what's right, what's left. So I say, okay, which hand do you use for drawing? She says, this one, well, that's right. Then we have yellow, which actually means left, right? Opposite of the hand you're writing. Then we have this blue bar, blue block, which is special, so I'll come back to that later. And then we basically have these two blocks. They are kind of special blocks. You know, the first one, black one, is actually the random stuff. So you never know what Kubeto is going to do. You just put it there and you hope for the best, you know? or how I look at it, I call it a bug. You know, it's like, you know, you build up code, you know, and most of the cases it actually works how it should, but from time to time it just explodes for no known reason, you know. This one is funny, because actually Kubeto will make one step forward and then one step backward and come back to the same position. So you can actually use it in some games and, you know, make some funny stuff, but in theory it's a really funny block. So how it goes is basically you take a board and you put the first command on this position here. If there is no block at this position, Kubeto will not do anything because there is no initial command. And then if you want to Kubeto to do multiple stuff, you just continue following the step. And as you can see, you can put a lot of commands for Kubeto to actually do. There is one block here, which is a special block, and I'll come back to that also later. So once you actually put Kubeto, turn it on, put a board, turn it on, they make connection, you actually put some you know, blocks inside, it's going to look something like this. So if you take a look, there is a small light indicating here, which means basically this is the command that I will do. As you actually then, what you need to do is of course say Kubeto, okay, run the commands and you need to press a magical button here and then actually send the magic to Kubeto. Then Kubeto will actually start doing one, one command at a time, and as Kubeto goes and does commands, these lights will be turned off one by one. And it's just magical, you know, like, I loved it, you know, basically, it's like visual debugger, you know, because you create a program for Kubeto, you put Kubeto, you press a button, and you just watch, you know, like, lights going off, Kubeto doing something, you know, I loved it, you know, like, I, I, I was, like, really enjoying playing with it, and, you know, okay, I'm a big kid, but... 
Who wouldn't you know, like something like this? Then, if Kubeta comes to this blue block, like I said, this is a special block. So Kubeta will not go forward, it will not turn left, it will not turn right, it will not go backward, it will not you know, fly off. What actually it will do is look at this block here and actually do stuff here. And when I realized this, I said, oh my god, there is subroutines or method calls or function calls, whatever you want to call it, depending from which language you're coming. You know? So it's not like I say go left, right, forward, left, right, forward. I can also call it the make the function calls, and I can make multiple of those. So I can actually create very complex programs for Kubeta, you know, like with visual debugger, and it was like, I was blown away. You know? like, I didn't expect this, to be honest with you. They didn't show this option in, in videos. If they showed this option, I would buy you know, multiple of them, you know? <laughs> so maybe that's a good reason they didn't put there, you know? <laughs> so, one additional thing which actually comes with Kubeto is like a storyboards. And this is basically like a game where actually there's like a story, and in a story there's your kid, of course, there is Kubeto, and they're actually on some adventure. They're doing something, you know? So there is, there is a story, and then at one point of time, Kubeto actually needs to do some task. And how it actually happens is then basically the kid thinks basically your child needs to give her commands to Kubeto, and Kubeto needs to do a certain task, then the story progressed, then another task, and so on. So again, like we unpacked everything, I explained to her all the rules and everything. So, okay, oh, okay, like why not? Let's try this, all right? It's for kids. So I start reading to her stories, so, okay. Kubeto is here, and now we are going basically, I think it was picnic or something like that, so Kubeto needs to come from the city to the picnic area, which is under the tree. You understand? Yes. Here's the magical stones. Tell Kubeto actually how to go to the picnic area. You understood everything? Yes, I did. This is what she did. <laughs> so, if you look at this, in my mind there's only two possibilities that you can choose from. Number one, Either she's a genius and found an extremely complex way to actually solve the problem at, at, you know, at hand, or there's option two, where actually she says, okay, I have a board, I have a lot of magical stones, let's put as many as we can, you know? Uh, like I said, Kubeto arrived like 20 minutes before this, so I just explained to her all the rules and everything, so you choose which one of those two are correct. What I knew that I did is like say, okay, I'll not tell her anything. I'll just let her run it. If everything goes wrong, it's perfect. Because again, I don't want to say, okay, this is wrong. I want for her to fail at something, but then actually be able to learn from the failing. You know? So that's something that we as a parents very often forget. You know, we don't give our kids chance basically to fail at something. You know, they need to fail in order to learn. So, and to be honest with you, I also really wanted to see what the hell is going to happen. You know? Because this looked awesome. So she went for it. You know, she clicked the button, and then I was looking at the program, and I saw something. The blue box. The blue command. And the blue command, what does it do? It goes to the special block, right? OK, so what's in the special block? I. So let's recap. Blue block means go to the subroutine or method, whatever we want to call it. And if we have in a method, called to the method itself, then we all know what that is, right? It's recursion. And not only any type of recursion, because in this case, there is no if, else, you know, while return. So this is just going for it. So this is infinite recursion. And at that point, I started to panic. Because I realized something, you know? If somebody, whoever was building this stuff, didn't thought about this, you know? Didn't thought about this edge case in my mind, which my daughter hit on the first go. Didn't really test it good. There's good possibility that whatever the brain is in Kubeto is going to be fried, you know, because they, I can't do this. You know? Then. So I was in panic. I was looking what's going to happen. And Kubeto came for the blue box. Then went there and nothing happened. <laughs> it was good, you know. Kubeto survived. So then I started thinking, okay, why we actually went this bad, you know? So then I started thinking, okay, maybe because I gave her a big box of all the blocks, magical stones, you know, she thought maybe she needs to use all of them, you know? So they say, okay, let's scale it down, you know? And we went really to the basics. So I gave her only three box blocks. 
one green, one yellow, one red. So go forward, go left, go right. And again, this is more than enough that she needs to actually solve any kind of problem. Not only that, I even position it like this on her board so she can actually remember which one means which because she was constantly forgetting which one is for what. You know, again, like it's, I just explained to her, so she needs time. So like we said, like red for ri right, green for forward, yellow for left, right? And also I said, okay, like once you put it, go back to does it, put it back so you can actually remember what it does. Also, I ditched the stories because I thought, okay, it's very long stories. It needs a lot of concentration, a lot of basically action from her and patience. So let's go for something more basic. And we also got, you know, these kind of cards with Kubeto. There are some animal cards, and I knew she loves animals, so animals will keep her busy. You know, it will keep her concentration on. And again, there are some rules that you need to basically do with the animals, but I never bothered to read them. I just say, let's just imagine our own game. Our own game was very simple. We have a world where actually we put Kubeto, and we put it some, he's somewhere in the world, and basically then Kubeto needs to save the animals, you know. And he's saving the animals by the way, in the way that actually he goes to the animal, he comes to the card of an animal, and then basically that's how he saves it. Then when that animal goes away, I put the next card. So at any point, there's only one animal card on in the world. So in that way, if I want to make game more difficult or more easy, I can do that. You know, depending if she's tired or not tired, if she's engaged or not engaged, I can actually, you know, tweak it how I like it. You know, I'm cheating, I know. So in this case, we're saving the whale. And I'm not sure if you can see clearly, but in this case, whale is on a mountain. And like I said, my daughter really likes animals and she really knows animals very well, so she knows that animal lives you know, in an ocean, you know, so often can't be there, right? Actually, what happened is one, on one occasion, on a purpose, I put an elephant on a tree, and she just started laughing, you know? She was, like, hilarious about it. She really loved it. So since then, I was just, like, trying to be as crazy as possible because I saw, okay, this keeps her interesting. She keeps concentration. She really then wants to save the animal because she knows, okay, like, whale can't live on a mountain, so we need to save him, right? So basically, I use that you know, against her without she even realizing that. Of course, we made it more difficult by having these like obstacles. Again, these obstacles is also something which actually came with Kubeto. And again, I really didn't bother reading what the hell there was supposed to be there. Like for me, it's, it's perfect. It's obstacle. So let's summarize what I was talking so far. First of all, Let's make it fun and creative for them. You know, if it's not fun, if it's not creative, they will not be engaged. They will not be concentrated. They will not be patient enough. They will not learn anything. You know, and that's what we want from them. We want their engagement. You know. Additional thing, it's 2018. You know, technology is on our side. There's a ridiculous amount of stuff out there that you can find actually to use for your kids to to actually push them in the right direction. You know, in my case, it was Kubeto. In your case, it can be who knows what. You know. Make it into a game. I think that's very important, especially when it comes to my daughter, you know, because, you know, I'm not sure about your kids, but in case of my daughter, if I say, you know, pick these animals and put them in the box, you know, I know what's going to happen. She will say no. If I say, you know, let's, you know, compete and see who actually can take more animals and put them in the box, she's going to start running for it, you know, because she wants to win. So kids are always ready to play games with us. So use that in our advantage, you know, like another very important thing, you know, Make them feel important, you know. Make imaginary world where actually they are the kings and the queens, you know. In case of my daughter, that made wonders, you know, because when I told her, okay, like, you know what, the robot is coming, it's going to be only yours robot, you know, only for you. It's going to listen only for you. Only you can command him, you know. You, can, you are the only person in the whole world that this robot is going to listen to, and you have to protect him, you know, and make him actually do good stuff for it. She loved it, you know, it really clicked with her and probably it's going to be also with your kids. Thank you. Uh, don't forget to vote if you like the talk. If you didn't like the talk, vote again, but be positive. Uh, any questions? Yes? Sorry? Well, yeah, yes and no, so in theory, Again, it really worked because she really likes playing with it. You know, the downside is that from time to time I have to actually like push for it. So, you know, she's not like 
I always have to remember, okay, we need to go for it. You know, so for example, Legos was something that whenever I say, okay, let's show, show we play Lego, she's always, yes, she runs for it, you know? So the same thing with Cubeto. Whenever I mention, like, shall we play Cubeto or go outside or do something, she say, okay, yeah, let's play with Cubeto. But if I am not the one who actually initiates it, then she just forget about it. Because again, she has so many toys, other stuff, then she's like, I'll go ride the bike, I will play with dolls, I will do this, I will do that, you know? So it really worked for, in my case, but I'm still the one who actually initiated it. And again, like, I would say that I'm kind of different from the other people in a way that basically I'm in IT and my wife is also in IT. So, so from that side, she already sees both of us actually working on the computers and doing stuff. So it also makes a little bit of difference, you know, setup. Uh, so far now, she's four years old at the moment. So again, like, I really, you know, I was, uh, my next step is probably going to be Scratch. Yeah? Sorry, how much? I th yeah, I think, I, think, I think something about 300. Something. It, it wasn't cheap. Yeah, it wasn't cheap. So that's why when it's actually, when she created recursive loop, I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, it's also like, again, like there's like the basic key, there's additional key, there's this and that. And I, t where, for example, I went for really the basic, no, most basic one because I went without a lot of additional stuff. But now, because I know she loves it, and sh now I'm actually planning to buy additional worlds, additional stuff, you know, additional things, you know. But again, it's, do you want to invest or not? It's the future of your child, so. Okay. Okay, I didn't know that there is like in between step between the standard and Duplo. So in my case, I just went directly to, to the standard one. Just basically, so now she has basically a few boxes of the Lego Duplo and she has a few boxes of the standard Lego. So we also play with that one and we... Okay, I didn't, I didn't know about Lego Junior. Thank you. And uh, no, because again, like I said, when I was looking at all of this, my daughter was 11 months old, so then I was like, hey, all the computers are out of the question. Then basically when Lego really worked good for her, then I said, okay, what's the next step? I saw the, the Cubeto, and Cubeto is like, basically whenever the kid is like normal and knows like how to put a box in, you know. So, so I now, like I said, like now I'm already at the step, okay, what's the next one? Because again, I want still to keep her in this world, but also go for the next one. Yes, there was a question up there. So what is what was? I don't understand. Can you, can you repeat? Sorry. Oh, what was her first job, uh, program in Java? Oh, she she's not not uh, she's still not on that level. I wouldn't go directly to the Java. In that case, I would go to the green food because, as far as I know. Again, I didn't really go into details with the Greenfoot. I just once saw some uh, videos, some presentations. Greenfoot is basically like a Java, but very simplified one. So I would go basically, my at least my goal so far is like, okay, Lego, Cubeto, then I would like to go to the Scratch, then from the Scratch to go to the Greenfoot, and then from the Greenfoot I would basically then go to something else. Any other question or? Uh, which one, what was the color? Oh, yellow one, it's, it's just step forward, step backward. Any other question or everybody's for beer? Yep. Uh, two. But again, like, I, like in my mind, she was always very advanced. So, again, yeah, again, like you saw what she did, like she was like, she wasn't really solving the problem, let's be honest with that, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so at the moment, basically, we are now, like, one step is without any problems, so she now go, like, f two, three steps without, you know, like, without the problems, even sometimes even four, you know, we, when she's really concentrated on it, so. Yeah, yeah, so basically, she goes, if you go, where is this thingy? Ah. 
Yeah, so basically she goes to this and basically comes to the top of the first part. If she, sometimes she wants to go even further, but I say, okay, well, let's make it actually that it really works. Uh, uh, sorry, um, can you just repeat the question about the constraints? Uh, no, the Kubet will just. Uh, yeah, yeah, it will just go. So from the Kubet point of view, like it just does what you know, the commit does, you know, like a computer. Like I need to walk forward. Like there's a wall. I'm still walking. <laughs> well, basically this is the stack. So whatever you can put here, like that's it. Uh, you can't go, so it can't go with recursion. So recursion is, I think that they basically they put very simple check and say, okay, the blue blocks don't work, uh, or is the, yeah, so I think that they just, come back, come back. Yeah, I think that they just say, okay, blue box here don't work. And I, and that's my assumption, because in her case, the blue box was the first one, it just didn't, didn't work at all. So again, I would also put that one. Yeah, so basically you can, basically if you put everything else like the blue ones, and here you basically put something to do there, so that's the maximum thing that Kubet can do. But you can't do recursions, like they put little blocks for that. It, it's, it's very simple, like uh, actually this one had some problems with the batteries, it leaked, so I had to like disassemble it, and like I was like, what the hell am I going to do now? So inside it's like one CPU or something, like it's very, very like in two wires, it's like very basic. Uh, and honest answer is no. I know that there is some other like bugs where you actually like, you press the buttons on on the bug itself, and then the bug actually does some stuff. Because when I show this to some of my friends, they actually said, "Okay, like we have something similar." But I'm not sure if that one also can do recursions. So my honest answer is like, I don't know. Again, like there are a lot of crazy stuff out there, so like I wouldn't be surprised if there is. Probably, like, like I said, like, this is the first thing that came uh, when I started searching. This is the first thing that actually came along, and for me it was like perfect. So I just didn't go any further. Like. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, well, like I said, in ah, this doesn't work anymore. Uh, actually, I'm far away. So. Where is the thing with the games? So when it comes to the games, where is this thingy? Come on. Uh, well, from my side, the most thing that I found was, like I said, already, where is it? yeah, this one. And basically at that point, I realized, okay, the games, at least for my kid, for this age will not work. Because again, like if I really need a program, if I really need a computer, then she needs to be an older, and then I didn't want to wait that long. They're they're all kind of games for tablets, you know. Like I don't like I don't even know what. I know that she ha actually has like a cat that actually then she needs to feed and wash and like do the brush the teeth and things like that. You know, and she also enjoyed that one. It's on a tablet game. I forgot. It's like Tom says something like that, you know, because she actually says stuff and then basically the cat says it back and she like just laughs. So there are all kind of games on Android and like on tablets, like. Every day is like billions of them, you know. Yeah, but you recommend that I, I would just lie if I say yes, you know. So I just basically went for, for the Play Store, like, uh, ah, it looks nice, looks nice, looks nice, install, 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 install. Do you like it? Yes, you like it, then we keep it. You don't like it, I delete it, you know. So that was my approach. So there is no specific one which I would say, okay, this is the perfect, you know. Any other questions? Yep. Ooh. So I just need to wait three more years. <laughs> mm. 
that's cool. I know my life is going to be soon, very nice soon. <laughs> my wife will not be that happy. You know? it's like, Another toy, like, it's for her. Wow. Okay, so they really went nuts. They're like junior, there is quadruplo. <laughs> you see, we're all learning something. You know, I have no clue about those things. You know, like when I went to shop, I just saw like Lego and Lego was like, you know, like duplo. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I think like they put all those kind of things like if you know kids can like yeah safety all those kind of okay so thank you very much you know like yeah.